some of you will know this to be reasonably old news, but it is worth talking about because what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, uh, uh, okay. Well, there's, there's been a discussion, I suppose, yeah. that's kind of kicked off because, in a way, because of Helldivers, it's $40 for the whole live service instead of $70 for uh, an attempt at a AAA game experience that also is a live service. Uh, and I think uh, comparing, you know, comparing the prices of things, people have found that to be interesting. For a little quick fact, uh, Matt, this is a fun quick fact. So the maximum amount of money you can spend at once in Helldivers 2 is $19.99. That's like as, as high up as the, you know, virtual currency bundle goes. Uh, actually, seriously? Yeah. Uh, you're not taking the piss, are you? Um, well, name, I don't, name, name $20. I, I believe it's $20, yeah. Whereas in Diablo 4, it's $150. <laughs> I think that I, might be the best versus the worst. Because I've seen a lot of in-game stores. I've seen a lot of in-game oh, yeah, prices. Yeah. And I see things cap out at like 60, 70, 80. And I go, okay, that's more than I'll ever spend it when going virtual yeah, currency. Oh, no, well, Get off my goddamn screen. D4 is 150. So okay. yeah, D4 is 150 bucks. Um, but then it kind of gets more interesting because you earn premium currency at a rate of about 30 to 40, or sorry, I think it's 10 to 40 is what Arrowhead predict um, when you're just playing Helldivers 2 normally. So it what is all- What kind old. of timeline is that on? Uh, that's an hour. Uh, well, they're playing way more efficiently than I am. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. well, th that's what <laughs> yeah. they say. And I've, I've certainly seen plenty of people in our comments saying that's yes. what they've been earning as yeah. well. Yeah, just, so, just not me, I'm bad. Oh. Uh, Mm -hmm. So okay, I'm. Uh, I'll talk about building a computer uh, a little later. So anyway, right. Um, in Helldivers, then the actual cosmetics that you can buy, those are so much cheaper than a D4 one. Where in D4, yep. mm. in D4, it's really interesting. Um, and actually, we'll we'll get onto it a little bit. I think when we go through the sixty-five dollar amount, because it's it's really currency with amount rather than amount with currency when you kind of think about how the value sliced up. But it's it's just really interesting because people have very much embraced Helldivers 2. Um, they have seemingly have embraced the live service part of it too, right? They're like, they're, they're not feeling super pressured to buy things. People are then reporting that makes them want to buy things. Um, obviously, so they can fund super democracy. Um, managed democracy. Yes. Managed democracy on super earth. Um, so anyway, we thought it was kind of funny in D4 that you're dealing, right? These are the $30 dark pathways portals. So this is uh, $30 for five portals, one for each class, I believe. Yes. Uh, now you do get a thousand platinum included, which is enough to buy the premium battle pass. So is that a tenner? That's a tenner. But, okay. That's a tenner. So, okay, uh, so you're getting a tenner and then you're spending $20 for, you're getting $4 for a portal. Yeah. Yeah. What a steal. Um, and I guess what's quite funny is you've actually almost hit the entire price of Helldivers 2 uh, by just buying these five colored portals. And as, um, as pointed out, <laughs> you kind of also just, you could you could have just bought Last Epoch. How much did it cost? It's I think it's $35. Something well, like there that. you go. You can yeah. buy five portals or the Last Epoch. Yeah, you could just buy the whole last video game or you could buy some portals. And I know we have talked about this like ad nausea with World of Warcraft where, we, you know, it's the we talked about this and I was more than happy to uh, throw money for the, the like, Loves in the Air set mm. and then go, well, that's like two indie games or a whole other video game. You're like, yeah. But at least that was like a cool transmog set. What is this? Fucking portals? Like, there you go. I would love to... No. <laughs> nope, nope. I'm. T I go back in this. I would not love to know the kind of person who's paying for this. Nope. Um. Well, you see, here's the thing. Um. And actually, I remember we did some video about microtransactions, and I saw someone like quote tweeted me, and you know they were angry about it, right? So anyway, I clicked through <laughs> on their profile, and they're like a Silicon Valley tech worker. Uh, so I think the bit that's maybe interesting here is some of the people who are setting a lot of these prices. I wonder what sort of compensation they are on and what kind of like value, you know, like for, for money do they have? So as an example in LA, I remember at the hotel, if you wanted like a large cappuccino with an extra shot or, or whatever, it almost was coming out to like $10, right? Now here, that same thing would cost half of that. And if you're going to somewhere that's good, so not Starbucks, uh, it'll be about £3.40 for, uh, you know, for a cappuccino, maybe that's about five bucks, right? 
Um, so I'm just thinking like a lot of these microtransactions, if you know, if you're outside of London, it's not priced for your income. Like that that's the thing. Like, what is that like average salary of those workers uh in those very expensive parts of the States? It's, you know, it's fairly high. You're looking at like a lot of these tech workers who if, if they were on if they were on the salary that you know they, they have over in, in SoCal, but they like brought it to here in Belfast, they could live like a king. You know, like absolutely. So that whenever you say like who's buying this, it's just a completely different scale of money. Uh, I, I think that's basically uh, the answer as I think our, you know, little segments of our economy just kind of, you know, get further and further and further away from each other. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, it's still interesting because obviously then that means that, man, like a $15 India must be nothing to people with that amount of money. So why don't they buy them all and save our industry? Thanks. <laughs> it's, it's kind of No, nah, because I'd rather weird. buy this. Because the and I think uh, a lot of them are probably a bit closer to the sort of gaming culture of uh, I know I, I mean I know at least South Korea but same in some other uh, Asian countries where like just buying a bunch you know the way it's like if somebody buys a bunch of shit in a game we basically look down on them for doing that because mm-hmm. like well you didn't earn that shit uh, you know that's like fairly different I know at least in Korean MMOs yeah at least it's in their domestic market. largely uh that was a big conversation brought around diablo immortals release in china and stuff where yeah. it's like yeah it turns out skill includes the amount of money you make from your day job it's like yeah skill issue open bracket actually it's a money issue but they're the same to us which i'm not sure if that's completely like true but that is what people say largely it is when what it comes to that, say, be- yeah. that being acceptable and things like that so then we get to the $65 mount, which isn't really a $65 mount because actually it is... Uh, <laughs> Hang on, it's basically free. It's ba- it's a free mount. There be- Yeah, it's the Vitreous Scourge, which, uh, yes, you get the mount with uh, associated things as well as 7,000 platinum, which uh, now that's, steal. An, that's a steal. It's an exciting consumption opportunity. Uh, that 7,000 platinum you could turn into... Two transmog sets, Amazing. two, incredible. Because uh, there, really? yeah, there was one that's like twenty five bucks. Really, uh, and that brought me to another thing then, which is looking at the battle pass. So, imagine in World of Warcraft if the BFA and Shadowlands style tier armor, where it's per armor like class. Imagine if you got a worse version of that. And then all of the things themed to your class or loads of the things themed to your class were for purchase. That's essentially what's happened in this game. So when I was looking at the most recent uh, Battle Pass, it was a red version of the set and a blue version of the set for every class. But if you look at the store, the store will say, hey, here's a bit of Druid armor. So if you want to purchase a bit of armor that actually, you know, feels like an amazing cool looking end game set for what you play that's the store so and so in world of warcraft terms you're getting your bfa tier gear from the game and then getting your dragonfly tier gear from the store yes fantastic i really i'm very happy just that it's not per armor type and yeah, it's just it's one pure, set. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm very happy that <laughs> whoever is like maybe it's just the, like the sub price for a while Maybe it's like some other stuff people are buying. Maybe it's, um, no, it wouldn't be the bots because they're making money off the game. Uh, whatever it is, whoever's holding the line and stopping that from actually being a thing inside World of Warcraft, thank you. You're doing the very, yes. very good work. I'm very you're, glad. Sa- you're saving us all from this. Oh, God. Ask, uh, like, that's the kind of thing where I don't even like, um, I, don't, I don't even mind, like, if people are playing d4 and stuff obviously whatever but there's just something about this is like man i can't hear that and have that in any capacity translate to that sounds like a good or fun game to play and obviously for people actually embedded in the system in the game and like it that's like obviously they can play whatever they want that's completely fine but then you're like huh but how do you get more players in when you're you know talking about that when that's the conversation being had, yeah, they they don't care. Because they've got their, clearly they've got their wheels on the hook, and that's it. Yeah, huh? Yeah, because that th- seems very defeatist. But that's clearly what's going on. Yeah, 
Like that, that's, you know, this is not like spending money for growth. This is like full monetized mode. And you'll see what it's like when we move to Hearthstone. Uh, Because honestly, the Hearthstone stuff makes this look totally reasonable and good value. Mm. (laughs) That really does sound insane to say. But yeah, look, I just thought it was interesting because we're seeing this obviously happen in more games, but that Helldivers 2 is sort of rehabilitating. Like, oh wait, you can do live service good, which like obviously you can. World of Warcraft's been doing live service for the most part good for, you know, like since 2004. Um, it's just, yeah, it gets to the point where it's kind of taking the piss and it's that idea of, you know, we're, we're all buying to access a game, but then you think like, well, who's actually driving the revenue? You know, what, what what's going on with the flows of money? What sorts of players will be catered to? And I think quite obviously, like, yeah, they could have something be an earnable druid set that looks that cool in game. Uh, or they could just put it in the store, and evidently they're happier to put it on the store. Yeah, well, I mean that because you know <sighs> if they put it in the game, that would be like something exciting. Yeah, so like obviously, for everyone, I think that's where I uh, kind of think about what like modern gacha games are doing really well. And I was talking about with a couple people this, and it seems that like over time, the the trend has been towards more. Uh, I guess, and this is what, like, Blizzard used to have, and it was, like, I guess I would say cultural control, in a way. Where, obviously, one of the, like, biggest examples is, like, Blue Archives and, like, one of the biggest things. And, yes, I talked about it already. Yeah, I did this. I sped running a a mention of it this week. But it's all the gachas that give you free stuff, hand over fist, Mm. seem to ultimately win out in the end in kind of cultural capital and revenue and stuff like that. So it feels, it feels to me like the kind of, we now have our little co- closed off little thing and we're just going to try and squeeze the wheels inside our, uh, like inside our enclosure. Feels a little bit like kind of defeatist, kind of, oh, we've got everyone we need to, we'll just squeeze until it's dead kind of vibes as opposed to, okay, we'll bring people in and some of them will be wheels. It feels like they're not, like they're not, like they're finished fishing. Mm. All they're doing is getting the last dredges out. Well, I think as they see it, it's expansions that bring people in. And then mm. live service is about, or the sorry, the seasons is keeping the most dedicated player base. And that's the people who you're most likely to have success with when it comes to the bundles like this. So yeah. I think I, we, we just thought it was interesting um, considering, well, interesting in light of a lot of the discussions that are going on today. Yeah.